Good morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, being here. We're, I think, going to just get right into it. And uh, as people get coffee or tea or water, they'll filter back in. But uh, I should start by welcoming everybody and thanking you for being here and thanking Ray Thank you. for being here. Um, for those of you who didn't have a chance to read his bio, uh, Ray LaHood has been at the center of what's going on, going on in infrastructure in America for probably the last 20 years, if not more, uh, as a seven-term congressman who focused on these issues and did enormous work uh, with respect to roads and trains and airports. And uh, then probably more centrally, as the main person in the United States, the Secretary of Transportation, who thinks about urban mobility. So lots going on in that sector. And uh, we thought we'd sort of dance around a few issues and talk about a few issues that are on people's minds. And the first, of course, is autonomous vehicles, which uh, everybody's always the next new thing, right? It's everybody thinks very soon we're going to have nobody driving. I love driving. I love cars, but I'm not going to, that won't be the mode of how people get around. Is that realistic? You think that's really where we're heading? I think, I think that within, um, I agree with a previous speaker, I think within five years, you're going to see autonomous vehicles uh, uh, in some cities in America, not every city. Uh, the infrastructure has to be there. Uh, the will of the city has to be there. The will of the leaders of the city have to be there. Uh, but when you look at the investment that Google has made in autonomous vehicles, I've been to uh, Mountain View uh, on three different occasions and visited with the folks at Google. Uh, they're making huge investments. I've been to Pittsburgh and seen what Uber is doing. Uh, they're, they're making huge investments. I do think that autonomous trucks will probably be uh, more in the forefront than mm -hmm. autonomous vehicles because the trucking industry uh, is paying a lot of attention to this. So I think we'll probably see uh, more, the advent of more autonomous trucks before we see autonomous vehicles, but autonomous vehicles are coming and to you America. Think, uh at every level of government, are we dealing with this properly? Are we, are, are we may, the answer may be sure. We're, we're thinking about regulation, regulation, we're thinking about implementation. Are there things that stand out to you that either the US or any, any other country ought to be doing now as knowing you have this view that in five years this is the way people are gonna be moving around, whether through trucks or cars. Are there things we should be more focused on right now in that regard, either from a safety standpoint or an impact standpoint? I think for safety, um, that has to be the number one priority. And uh, I think it will be. The federal government, uh, the NHTSA organization as a part of the Department of Transportation is uh, paying a lot of attention to it. And uh, I think that uh, safety will end up being the, the number one issue that people are gonna deal with, whether it's Google or Uber or GM or any of these other car manufacturers, they have to account for the fact that when an autonomous vehicle or an autonomous truck is on the road, it, it has to be the safest that it can possibly be. Okay, well let's, so the flip side of that, of autonomous vehicles, is a movement that exists in some places and may be a very competing vision of the future, which is, should cities be car free? Should downtown Chicago, should the area we are in outside of here, is there really a point in having pri private vehicles on the streets? Is that a well, good well, thing? Well, look, at the incubator for transportation innovation and transforming cities are the cities, are the mayors, uh, are the city planners, are the people that uh, are really thinking about this. It's not being done at the federal government. Uh, and certainly uh, in New York, they've talked about congestion uh, pricing in Northern Virginia and places where there is a lot of congestion. They've talked about congestion pricing. Uh, and so some of that is being implemented and as cities become more congested and people continue to move into cities, I think you're gonna see city leaders and mayors and city planners and innovators and thinkers uh, really come up with uh, creative, innovative ideas about um, trying to get uh, more cars off the road and more people onto mass transit. Are you a fan? Would you, so the only cities, I, I'm sure there's other places I know of, London, Hong Kong, who have 
done congestion pricing as a way of reducing uh, private vehicles on the road, particularly in Center City. If uh, you're good friends with the mayor of Chicago, would you suggest that Chicago do that in the loop, eliminate private cars? I think for what uh, the mayor and uh, you and others have done previously in terms of upgrading transit, upgrading opportunities for alternatives to automobiles, if, if congestion is still a serious issue, I, I think it's something to look at. And you might do it in a, uh, in, a, in a pilot project in terms of a certain neighborhood or a certain part of the city uh, to, to really see how it works. Maybe it's in the center city that you do it. In New York, they restricted the, the number of trucks that could come into the city during certain hours, right. and that relieved congestion. So some of these innovative approaches uh, have worked. You, in order to innovate uh, congestion pricing and take cars off the road, you have to have good mass transit. You have to have good transit. You have to have good buses, walking and biking paths. You have to have bike share. You have to have all the alternatives that people can use when they give up uh, their automobile. Well, that takes us to transit, which of course is an incredibly important element of moving people around cities. So let's talk about public transit for a minute. Um, you and I have talked over the years, and it's sort of this interesting question of today, should we still be investing in public transit? Because maybe autonomous vehicles are coming. If we're, should we put money into further subway systems, say, in, in cities? Well, I think what we should do is, as a national government, be making investments in current systems. Um, I'm very proud, while we were at DOT, we made investments in transit systems all over America. We used the TIGER program to implement streetcar projects in cities that wanted a streetcar, not every city. Uh, we, we made uh, investments in bike share. We made investments in walking and biking paths. We made investments in opportunities in cities that had a lot of creative thinking going on about how to get people out of cars, to get cars off the road, uh, to reduce the carbon uh, footprint. And, uh, and certainly uh, trains are a part of that, buses are a part of that, walking and biking paths, streetcars are all a part of that. And the innovation has really come from the cities in terms of creating livable and sustainable communities. And uh, I, I think it, that, that will continue. Think public transit ought to be free? Uh, well, it's not free, and it probably shouldn't be free. But uh, uh, the the idea that uh, you create um, free transportation, maybe you do it for people who who really can't afford transportation. But uh, for someone who says, "I'm going to give up my automobile uh, for public transit," uh, obviously they can afford to pay for it. Uh, part of the money should come from the federal government to help fix up the infrastructure. The other part should come from the municipality, and there should be some kind of a user fee. So you think user fees? Because there's a there's a you know a reasonable sized movement that would say moving people around cities is maybe the most important component of making a city work efficiently. If you made transit free, you'd bring people off the street makes it a more attractive place. It's sort of an interesting experiment. Should, would, would you see? You know, I, I think you could, you know, I th again, I think you could do a pilot or two on that and, and check it out. But uh, I mean, I, I think for people that can afford uh, transportation, there, sh there should probably be some fee paid. And I guess that begs the question of, of fees is sort of a, a hot topic in transportation and infrastructure, you know, I think everybody in this room probably understands the, the, uh, the tension in the U.S. in particular between a deteriorating public infrastructure system and the need to fix that, and then where's the money going to come from? So what's, what's your, you're an optimistic guy, as we've talked over the years. You tend to have a bright outlook for the, how is this going to happen in America? Look, we, we need to take a page out of what the states are doing 25 states in the last three years have raised their own gas tax. They're not going to wait for Washington. Washington is doing absolutely nothing about infrastructure or transportation. We need to take a page out of what's going on in China and Europe and other countries where the national government has said, if you build a road, they will come. If you build a road, it becomes an economic corridor. If you build 
a walking and biking path, people will use it and get out of their cars if you build a transit system. And that's what they're doing. Any of you that have been to China know they're building airports, they're building uh, roads, they're building bridges, uh, they're building everything that they can possibly be built because these become economic engines in communities to attract people, to attract businesses, and we're doing absolutely nothing at the federal level. And I've, I've talked for the last four and a half years uh, that I've been out of government. We need to raise the gas tax. The gas tax is what built the best interstate system in the world, right here in America. National government, when they make investments in infrastructure, it benefits everyone. It benefits the people who build it. The money doesn't stay in the national capital. It's not going to stay in Washington. It's going to come back here. It's going to employ people, people who are going to build roads, people who are going to build infrastructure, people who are going to build, rebuild transit systems, people who build the cars, the new cars that are going to be mm -hmm. in these transit systems, people that build the buses. This is a win-win for America. And uh, we are so far behind and so backward uh, we're like a third world country right now when it comes to infrastructure because we don't want to make the investment. We don't want to raise the gas tax. We don't want to go to vehicle miles traveled. We don't want to create an infrastructure bank. The national government has no commitment at this moment to infrastructure in America. And just quickly, and the how does one change too. that political will? Because you were a congressman for seven terms, every two years for seven cycles. Right. You had to go in front of a reasonably conservative district in central downstate Illinois and convince people who worked hard for their money, people who were thrifty, that they should pay more. They should in right. accept increased taxes in order to fix a road. That's a, that's a big connection you have to make between people's desire to have a nice road, say, and pay money now. Well. Uh, the answer is what 25 states have done in the last three to four years, raise their own gas tax, and not one politician has been thrown out of office as a result. And this is done in very conservative states, Wyoming, all Republican, Utah, all Republican, Iowa, all Republican. I mean, Republican governor, Republican legislature. Why? Because people want their potholes. America's one big pothole right now. <laughs> and people want their potholes fixed, they want their roads fixed, and they know when that happens, we're investing in friends and neighbors, the friends and neighbors that are fixing the roads and fixing the bridges and fixing the transit systems. When you see the orange cones, you know what you see? People at work and also infrastructure being fixed. Right. And um, so there, there has to be a national commitment. Uh, there isn't. A lot of us thought that when Trump got elected, maybe he'd put the emphasis on infrastructure. He talked a good game. Uh, like he does about a lot of things, and uh, zero, nothing has happened. I can't let you get down without talking for a minute about intercity travel, which is really largely airplanes, but in other countries, trains and airplanes and other forms. So first, let's start. Is there a role for high-speed trains in America? Should we make more investment in that? I, I've talked about the idea that, that trains are the next generation of transportation. Um, the Northeast Corridor, the Amtrak trains are completely jammed every day from Washington to New York. If you provide a good service at a cost that people can afford, they will use it. Nobody wants to get on the I-95 corridor and drive to New York. But you can be there in three hours and, and get a lot done. And uh, the trains that we invested in in the Midwest have been good investments from Detroit to uh, Chicago. Uh, the train that we invested in California. Jerry Brown, the governor, made a huge commitment. They're building a train from San Francisco to LA. Think of the number of cars that'll be taken off the road just along that corridor alone. And hundreds of people are being put to work building that, uh, that new high-speed uh, train. We are so far behind on that, particularly given what China's doing and certainly what, what has gone on in Europe. And we need, we, we need the national government investment to do it because Local governments, you know, local states just simply can't, can't afford it. What about air, air transit, real quickly? Airports and the air, air airports are system. Yeah, airports are huge, uh, huge economic uh, boon for uh, communities, what's going on here uh, in this city, but around, around America, huge investments in airports uh, because of the jobs, but also uh, because uh, flying is generally affordable and uh, 
and uh, people, um, you know, like to have uh, an opportunity to, to, to get a place, to get to a place uh, uh, by air. So airports are very important. What do you think we do to get U.S. airports on the quality level that you see in lots of other parts of the world? Yeah. Europe, China, Asia, yeah, Again, you have to make Middle the huge East. investments. And, uh, and, and uh, if you do that, people, if, if you build it, they will come. That may be the way you always should end a infrastructure discussion right. yeah. with that. Thank you. Feel the dreams. If you build it, they will come right. or travel, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, thank you. Thank you. Former thank Secretary you, Ray LaHood. Thank you, Steve.